which round one tight end is the best fit for the Dallas Cowboys? All that and more in this episode of the Lot Dot Cowboys Podcast. You are locked on Cowboys, your locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast locked Network. Your on. team every day. Locked, 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 locked on. Locked on. Locked on. Locked on Cowboys. Locked on Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why America's number one meal kit is the absolute way to go. I, I absolutely love that. Go to HelloFresh.com slash NFL60 and use code NFL60 for 60% off plus free shipping. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. Joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. You can check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, at this time next week, we're <laughs> going to know who the Cowboys' first round pick is. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. Uh, I mean, we we the days keep counting down. We we get closer and closer. Uh, I, I'm I'm excited. We're starting to hear whispers, starting to hear names, starting to hear mm-hmm. lies, starting to hear truths. Uh, it's 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 all happening right now. This last week of the draft, you're going to hear just a the fire hose of information yes. as it comes in. Uh, and I would say all of our preconceived notions that we have currently here on Friday, April 21st uh, will likely be gone by Wednesday of next week. As we are hearing a whole nother set of what the NFL is actually interested in doing. And then we're suddenly like, Oh, okay. Well, that's what's happening. That's usually what happens is that the whole thing gets turned upside down. Uh, Someone has a gas mask on, uh, you know, right before the draft. Sure. Uh, we're going to be answering your Twitter questions today. we got a lot of people that want to know about this draft coming up. And let's start with this question from at Succulent Crumb. He wants to know. <laughs> it's a great, great name. I love it. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us which round one tight end is the best fit for not only the Cowboys, but also Dak Prescott? <sighs> Uh, you know, I, I think that they're all good tight ends. And, uh, you know, as far as fit goes, you know, I think none of them don't fit. Let's put it that way. You know, I, I think the Cowboys could make them all fit. Look, if we're talking about specifically for Dak Prescott. And yeah, let's do that for, first because know, I do think there's a difference here. Yeah. Um, I tend to think that uh, having someone like reliable like Mike Mayer um, who can get open in short area spaces is something that Dak would appreciate. You know, he normally uh, is someone who prefers to throw to kind of more open players uh, uh, that he prefers route runners. And, it, and I think there's a misconception that like, you know, Mayer doesn't create separation or doesn't get open. I, I think that that's not true. I think it's just that his openings happen very quickly. And I think Dak's okay with that because Dak, Started his early part of the career with Jason Witten. So I, I, you know, I don't know that he's a ton better than like necessarily Dalton Kincaid, who is just more likely to get open and more. Well, see, that's you know, the funny thing. That's, that's where I was going for the exact same reasons. Dak likes to throw to open guys. I think Kincaid can more consistently get open than Michael Mayer. But, but I guess my question is, does Dal- does Dak like throwing in the areas that Dalton Kincaid is like, you know, different question. Yes. Yeah. See, that's the thing is that I think Kincaid is more of a downfield uh, tight end, uh, you know, not, not that he can't do shorts area stuff, but I, I just think that when Dak likes to throw to, I mean, this is a tough thing to parse, right? Because what, what is Dak's preference versus what Dak has all versus what is what Dak has already always had. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, the truth is, is that, what Dak has always had in these last few years with the Cowboys is not necessarily, you know, if, what what he would prefer if he was building his own team. So, I, I, we've seen him have success with obviously, you know, uh, I'll say Jason Witten type targeting sure. at a tight end. Right. The question would become if you got someone like Dalton Kincaid who is is a better receiver, gets open more, and that is definitely kind of pro Dak, but but does so you know, 10 to 15 yards down the field, as opposed to five to seven yards down the field. Right. uh, Is, is, is that make Dak more comfortable? Is it more useful to have a guy who could give you reliably 
five to seven yards on third and five every time versus a guy who on second and 10 can give you 15 yards if you get yep. it right. I, I think that's the questions that are having. I would say that those are the two guys, though, because like those to me are the most refined why, uh, receiving tight ends. They're very, very different. Yes, they are very um, different. But I, I do think that as far as what would make him the most comfortable, those types of of uh, reliable hands receivers, I think uh, those are the kinds that he's going to prefer. I'll be honest. I've been going back and forth on this the last few days, just kind of thinking about these two, because we didn't mention Darnell Washington, David LaFleur 2.0. Just joking. Oh. Uh, by the way, did you know that David LaFleur was six foot seven, 275 pounds? Yes, actually, I, I did remember that he was enormous when he came in. And I, you know, I, I definitely remember watching him and being like, this guy just looks like an offensive tackle. Well, that's funny. I was actually watching the 97 draft today. Just, I'm a total nerd. And they actually yeah. said, hey, if David LaFleur doesn't work out at tight end, he could be a right tackle in the <laughs> NFL, which I just started laughing. When you're like, oh, a 6'7", 270-pound SEC tight end? Maybe move Man, it's – <laughs> that's that's a great thing that's a great thing to throw into a first round picks evaluation hey <laughs> hey if he doesn't work out at the position that you drafted this first round player in you might be able to move into a position he's never played before that's that's hedging by, right there by the way going back and watching that draft the cowboys yeah. really wanted tony gonzalez uh troy aikman is even working out with gonzalez pre-draft and gonzalez went way higher than they thought so mm. never mind uh mm. back to kincaid and michael mayer uh, my question for you is it traditionally in a Mike McCarthy West coast offense, which of these two tight ends do you think makes more sense? Because I actually think it's Michael Mayer. Yeah. I think Mayer makes more sense in the, uh, because I mean, look, despite what, what, you know, again, just to kind of go against the preconceived notions, Mayer is a guy who spent almost 50% of his time in the slot. Like, I mean, he's not, he is considered to be a guy who could play in line and has showed has got a lot of great tape of him playing in line, but this is not a guy that is only an inline tight end. Uh, I think that the versatility to be able to kind of move all over the formation, that's, you know, I, I would say more of a McCarthy thing. He's definitely going to like in McCarthy's system, both of these guys will end up playing sometimes split, split away from the formation. Oh, you know, yeah. like that's just oh, part yeah. of what they do, especially Kincaid because that's just, yeah. Oh yeah. Life. Well, Kincaid yeah. will live there. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, that's, that would be the issue with Kincaid is that, that's where he would live, and then he would work his way towards, you know, get, making his way into the formation as an inline yeah. player. And that, and that kind of goes to the other thing right here, right? Is that how much are you re- really even using Kincaid as a tight end, right? You're really more using him as kind of a big move slot, you know, a H back type, which yep. is a different thing, right? So, you know, I, I think that Mayer makes some sense if you're. Like formationally, if you're trying to get keep him on the field the whole time, if you know you want him uh, uh, to be able to kind of be a, t- a true two way tight end, so you can cover up what you're doing when he's on the field. I, I, I think you know there's pros and cons for all these guys, so I, I don't know, know that I either know. one of them is necessarily a better fit for what the Cowboys are doing than the other. Last one, last one. Uh, just looking at the tight end room, right? Jake Ferguson, Peyton Hendershot, Sean McEwen. Yeah. Which of these tight ends fits the best inside that tight end room? Because I, I, for me, it's Darnell Washington. Oh, oh, we're we're adding those guys in. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, basically, Washington. like, do you feel like if you have Michael Mayer, it's too much of the same? It's all guys that are like six foot four and a half, two hundred and fifty pounds that all run in the four sevens. I don't think that it's. I definitely think that you're 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 right in the sense that I think Kincaid and Washington are both different physical types of tight ends yes. than what you currently have. But I, I would say that I think Mayer's game is still very different than the guys uh, that you have in house, right? Like I, I think, like we talked about, Ferguson is a yak player. Like you want to get you want to get him on a, on a situation where the the, the team has <laughs> the, the the team has lost track of him, you know, because mm-hmm. you're in a twelve formation. He slipped out instead of blocking. Uh, I think Hendershot is kind of Hendershot is actually maybe closer to Kincaid. I agree. Yes. Than than all the just other without the athleticism, the right? Without yeah, the long speed. If we're going to like compare one tight end from the Cowboys to any draft eligible tight end that we're talking about, I think Hendershot and Kincaid are the closest, you know, one for one. Right. Uh, But I think that obviously you still would use Kincaid a lot more. He's definitely a lot more developed receiver. 
I think Washington is clearly the one guy who is very, very different body style wise. It would really kind of provide a lot of variety to the room. You know, the, obviously the question is there, how do you use those guys? You, I think that the thing with Washington is I'm really excited to get a guy like that on my team, but I think you'd have to be very, um, you have to have a plan in place, and, right? Yeah, exactly. That, that's, that's what I was gonna say is you have to have a plan in place for how to properly, yeah you know, get what you need, cobble together what you need out of the tight end position from these three very different tight ends. It's funny that if I ask you who fits deck the best, you might have an answer. You know, you might say Kincaid. If I ask you who fits Dallas better, you might say Mayer. If I ask you who yeah. fits the tight end room, it might be Washington. It's just, it's one of those really interesting tight end classes. Uh, yeah, really. Lena, let's get to, to some more questions next. This episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Something exciting is coming to build.com on April 22nd. That is tomorrow, Saturday. I don't have all the details yet, but the excitement is real. And it's something that you're not going to want to miss. We've been speculating in one of our group chats for a while what it could be. But if you know how Built works, they have the most incredible protein bars on the market right now. And they do these amazing flavor drops with unreal flavors in limited quantity. So mark your calendars. Head to build.com on Saturday, April 22nd to be one of the first to discover what all the hype is about. I can't wait to see what the new flavor is. I, I've got a couple ideas, but I'm getting uh, anxious. Make sure to use promo code LOCKDOWN15 and you'll get 15% off your next order at built.com. They don't have a chicken nugget flavor, Marcus. <laughs> Uh, not yet. Not <laughs> they yet. The other day. Uh, <laughs> uh, also yeah. want to let you know, Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special is here, and it's bigger than ever. Follow along. All 32 uh, of the team's first-round pick or first picks, uh, it is six-episode Ultimate Mock Draft experience only that Locked On can deliver. All episodes are available on Locked On NFL Draft on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Lena, let's actually talk about your selection really quickly yeah. because a lot of people – uh, we're curious about it. You can go listen to the full explanation uh, on the show. But you had the Cowboys selecting Boston College wide receiver Zay Flowers. Why did you decide to make that pick over guys like Steve Avila and Darnell Wright, who are still on the board? I felt like the value was such that uh, that the Cowboys couldn't pass up there. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting Zay Flowers to be available there. Um, I was ready to take Darnell Wright, um, and the draft, uh, everyone should go listen because it, it really did go kind of crazy in a, in a fun way. And, and I think I love these types of drafts and that's why I like participating in them obviously is because I think when you get experts on the teams representing the team themselves mm -hmm. individually, as opposed to like, you know, having to serve a whole bunch of other masters. Like if, you know, like when, when Dane sits down and does a mock draft for seven, you know, so for seven rounds, Round, I mean, yeah. God bless him, you know, and his talent uh, it's, he's constantly having to fit like, Oh, how do I, how am I going to get this all together? I only care about <laughs> making the Cowboys better right. when I'm drafting right. and, and the other teams represent. So I love these kind of drafts. And for me, you know, you and I had had a conversation before this about what we kind of wanted to look at uh, and, you know, built like a little miniature board. The way the draft kind of played out, and there was definitely some surprises that you guys should check out. Yes, definitely. Uh, it, yeah, for sure. Uh, it, 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 it caused kind of a, a chain reaction of different things to happen, including Zay, uh, for Flowers to fall all the way that he down to 26 the way he did. So when that happened, um, I tried to trade out, uh, but as you'll discover, there was not a lot of trading out at that point and not people were interested in trading back. So, uh, it wasn't a very difficult decision because i I had flowers a little bit higher on my board than right. Yep. Um, and I, I, it was, it was a pretty easy pull of the trigger. For and us. it just gives the Cowboys more speed, which we've yep. been asking for forever on offense. And we talked about finding a role for Zay flowers. You can play him on the outside to stretch the field. You can play him in the slot. You can play him in the backfield. It just feels like it's another weapon to give Dak where we've talked about all off season. They've got to make, they got to give Dak Prescott an easy button, right? Yeah. And just simple things to get him in rhythm. Have any, somebody like Zay Flowers who can run a two yard drag route and take it 17 yards to start a drive off. It's going to be insanely valuable. We just talked about it. Dak likes guys who can get open. You know, yeah. he likes guys that find a way open. Zay Flowers, as much as anybody in this class, has the ability to separate and find space, uh, especially underneath. So I thought it was a good pick. All right, let's get to uh, some more questions. This one from Payson. He wants to know who is the guy that the Cowboys may like more 
and draft earlier than the consensus, similar to Nashawn Wright was at 2021, Sam Williams in 2022. Is there a name that kind of pops up for you? That the Cowboys may like better than the consensus. Yes. Um, you know, I, I think these – I think that the other teams are high on some of these uh, linebackers who could be pass rushers types. That's, like, that's exactly the way I was going, yes. Yeah, like, I mean, Trenton Simpson is a guy that, like, I think kind of fits in here. Obviously, Drew Sanders is a guy that fits into there. I think that they are going to hold those types of players. And and, and, and Henley. Uh, from, Henley from uh, Washington State. Washington yep. State. Uh, I think they're going to hold those guys maybe in slightly higher regard than some other teams would because other teams may be a less uh, confident in their ability to identify those types of players. The Cowboys, I think, feel good about uh, having specifically a role, having done this with Micah Parsons before. I, I think the idea that they could find someone who has similar traits who could you know, kind of be a counterbalance to Micah Parsons, you know, like maybe playing back when he's down and playing back, uh, down when he's back. Uh, I, I think that that's something that they might feel a little bit more confident in their ability to identify and develop than maybe the average team because they've had success where a lot of other teams have not. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought Drew Sanders because that's a name that we know the Cowboys had in for a 30 visit. Um, he's got pass rush ability as well. But listen, go do go do these mock draft simulators and look at the yeah. the linebackers that are typically available for the Cowboys in rounds two, three, and four. There's not a lot of talent there, right? Like yeah. it's just not one of those classes where it's deep at linebacker. And if you want somebody that can come in and play right away and give you a little bit extra or a little bit more something else, you probably have to draft that guy in the top forty. Now, and I'll selecting Drew Sanders at 26 or wherever would not be my favorite pick, but you could understand the Cowboys being like, you know what? Tight end is deep this year. Wide receivers are going to stretch into the second round. We like some mid round offensive linemen, but linebacker, if we want to get a guy, we got to take him early. Yeah. I think there's windows, right? I think, uh, and for the linebacker windows, it's very odd, right? There's a very big kind of hollow space in the day two area for the, for mm -hmm. the linebackers. I think the Cowboys would be interested in. So, I think you're right in the sense that the Cowboys have a choice here where they can draft a, a linebacker, you know, day one, day two. Uh, it, 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 if they do, they won't, they're going to get a very specific type of guy that they can be yep. versatile. They can do more than just be a run and hit linebacker. And then on top of that, if they can't, if, if, if they, you know, whatever happens, they decide to go a different route at, at day one then they probably are going to have to wait until a little bit later in the draft to kind yep. of go get a, I don't know a pace or, or or someone like that, and then and, and if they don't want that, then then they may just. I think no matter what we, I I don't want to say no matter what, but I think it's very 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 likely the Cowboys draft a linebacker, yeah, whether at it's some point, yeah, whether it's first round or seventh round. I, I think it's just because they they tend to do it a lot. These guys, they they are a little bit short at the spot. These guys, well, they have two guys that, were on, that aren't on the team that were on the team last year, and Anthony Barr and Luke Gifford. Like they, yeah, they need to add a body there. So I, I and, and I think you know just kind of you know, late 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 Manorish's contract is not forever. So I, I think that there is it does make yep. some sense to draft a linebacker. The question becomes where are those windows? And we just talked about it. If you can get one early, you can get one with some pass rush. That could be kind of a versatile chess piece. If you can't get that guy, you are probably waiting until day three. Probably a more limited player, not a guy that you're going to want to put on the field right. right away. Maybe more of a kind of a down roster special teams guy. We talked about those guys yesterday, D winners, those kind of players, right? So if you're interested in getting a guy that is going to be able to play significant snaps at linebacker for you this year, it, it yep. may require kind of reaching up. I don't know, it's not reaching, but like taking a guy earlier than a maybe you would be comfortable right. with normally taking a linebacker. Yeah, I agree. I think Drew Sanders, the last time I checked, is like 40th or something like that on the consensus board. Picking him at 26 is a slight, quote-unquote, reach, but I could see how if you want a linebacker that has something different than every other linebacker in this class because Henley, Jack Campbell, and Trenton Simpson are really your typical off-the-ball, run sideline to sideline linebackers, you do have to take that guy early and remember the Cowboys are missing like 800 snaps from last year's linebacker yeah. core because Barr and Gifford are gone so 
I guess you could make an argument that it's a it's a small need for them. And let's let's also not forget that like this is you know, we talked about this all throughout this draft season. After you get past 17, 18, 19, 20, right? 20 at the bottom, like the plateau of of, of talent between 20 and 60. Yep. Maybe even longer is 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 flat you know yep. so really it's about preference and need at that point you're not it, it lets, unless somebody falls from the top that 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 shows up at 26 for whatever reason uh, i think that, that it's more just about what you who of this kind of plateau of players all kind of evenly talented do you prefer as a best fit as a scheme fit exactly. as a personality fit for your locker room i agree all right let's take one more break and we'll come back and answer some more twitter questions all right, Landon, we've got a couple more questions to run through really quickly. This one from Gorn. He wants to know, the Cowboys have drafted a defensive end every year since 2014, a wow. Big Ten player every year since 2013, and a Senior Bowl player in round three in five of the last six years. Are these just fun coincidence things, or is it an annual draft strategy? Uh, I mean, that's... Now we're getting into the fun part of of draft analysis is is trying to parse you know trends and and yep. and you know detect. You I, know, I don't think they ongoing. purposely go out and say we don't we've got to get a Big Ten player. We're four rounds in. We haven't drafted one yet. But I do think the Cowboys put an emphasis on certain conferences, right? Like it's clear they value Big Ten players because they play in a lot of big games, and I think that style of football does translate well to the NFL. Yeah, especially along the the, the line for in line play, yeah. right? Yes. I think offensive and defensive lines in, in that division are are you know not quite maybe on par with the SEC, but they're definitely the closest. Thing but even like a tight end, right? Because the tight end's in line, yeah, right? Like yeah. Peyton Hendershot and Jake Ferguson, both Big Ten players last year. Well, I just you know it's just an interesting conference, and not to not to get into college football talk, but you know you have schools like Iowa and Wisconsin that are you know traditionally you know physical running football power teams, football. Yeah. power football teams. So they produce off strong offensive linemen, tight ends who can block, you know, and these are traits and, and, you know, look, those guys are also coached by, by uh, coaches that are, have a lot of respect in the NFL level. So, well, even like uh, Michigan, right. They run a yeah, very yeah. NFL style offense and Penn exactly. State's the same way. I mean, obviously Ohio state is a, is a, you know, a producer of NFL yep. talent as, yep. as good as a Alabama or Georgia. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that they, these are all trends. To, I think you're right into noticing these trends, but I don't think that we should necessarily uh, 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 assign meaning to them beyond what they are as, yeah. as data points, right? Like it's, I, I think that what this shows you not so much is that they are, interested in big 10 talent i think what it shows you is that they're interested in power five football talent yes. right that, yes. that they that they're they're not so much interested in uh uh i mean they are interested in defensive end but i think the idea is that they <laughs> that they they are trying to add talent uh, add depth to a position that they feel like they could never have enough depth at, yes right like these are i think we, we kind of instead of uh being myopic about the actual data points try to extrapolate out or 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 even take a step back from those data points and say, okay, what is, what is the whole picture telling me here? Yep. What, what are all these data points together tell me? And I think what, what, what it is telling you is the Cowboys do kind of have uh, uh, things that make them feel comfortable about their draft picks. D did yep. he play in, like we said, did he play in a power five conference? Is he, uh, uh, do, should we take a defensive end this late? We can never have enough defensive ends, right? Like right. I, I think that there are different kind of draft maxims that they kind of hold with them that feed this uh, 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 trend that we're seeing kind of manifested out as uh, picking a whole bunch of senior bowl players because they've seen them up close, picking a whole bunch of right. uh, 10 players because they have reliance on, on those kind of players. I think th that's what we are seeing. They have four positions that they prioritize more than any other positions, right? Wide receiver. Look how many receivers they've drafted over the last several years, including CeeDee Lamb in the first round, Michael Gallup in the third round, Jalen Tolbert in the third round, defensive end, which Gorn uh, mentioned, cornerbacks. 2021, they took two corners. They wanted to draft a corner in round one in Patrick Sertan. They ended up taking Joseph and Nashawn Wright and Israel McCamo. So really three corners. Yeah. Uh, they took Deron Bland a year later. Like they're yeah. just gonna they're gonna take a corner again this year. I can they promise will. you that. Yeah. And then offensive tackle. Last year's a perfect example. You drafted Tyler Smith in round one, who could play tackle and guard. They weren't done. They took Matt yeah. Willetsko, a 
you know, I'll project in round five. I'll bet you anything. They draft another tackle this year. They well, 2021. That's when they took Josh ball. They're going to invest in those four positions pretty frequently. Yeah. Tackle specifically another trend, right? This, they love t- to draft tackles because they feel like that's how they get their best tackles and guards. Yes. Right. Kyle like Williams, the, they, the, the example, best guards yeah. that they've developed have started out as tackles that they moved inside. So, yep. uh, yeah, I think that that's kind of the trend there is uh, if you want to look for another one of these trends is if the Cowboys are looking to draft a guard, don't be afraid to look at tackle for them. Yeah. Last question from Brady. This isn't the guy that we've talked about at all, but he wants to know uh, where would you have ranked Brian branch? If he's being evaluated as a cornerback, <laughs> is he a fit uh, for the Cowboys? Should he fall to 26? I fully expect him to be there when the Cowboys pick at 26, but I'm not sure about the fit with the Cowboys. Yeah. I think the problem fit wise is thresholds, right? He's, he's not going to meet a lot of the thresholds that the Cowboys like at the defensive back position. And I don't love that. He doesn't make <laughs> like, any, he doesn't, honestly, he doesn't hit a single one. He's undersized. He's under height and he doesn't have the arm life and he doesn't have the 40. He's, he is the exception to the rule that, football will, that, that will make it, you yeah. know, like he's, yeah. he is the, the, you know, honey badger. He is the the guy that okay, it doesn't all make sense, but you put on the tape and it yep. makes sense. You know, um, and that's fine. Like I, I think that's what the Cowboys are willing to sacrifice, yes. right? They're willing to sacrifice missing on Brian Branch so that they don't miss on t- five other guys that look like Brian right. Branch that aren't Brian Branch, Correct. right? Yep. So uh, that's that's just part of this game. Yeah, because I think. If the Cowboys drafted him, he would have to be a slot corner. But they've already yeah. got two slot corners on the roster, and Bland and Jordan Lewis. And I think they like those guys. Then I don't know if you draft a slot corner only at 26. And then you're talking about him playing safety. And you've got three safeties on your roster you like. It's just he's going to be an awesome player. It's just not yeah. a perfect fit for Dallas. I, if he was drafted by the Cowboys, I don't, I don't anticipate at all that he will. If he was drafted by the Cowboys, I definitely would trust Dan Quinn and, uh, and Joe Witt to figure out how to play him. Yep. But I, I just, I think with all the reasons you just talked about, it's not a clean fit. And I think no. that that sort of uh, is not something that they're looking to do in the first round. Yep. All right. That is it for today's show. Thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every day. Every day, or so. we'll be back on Monday, draft week, to start getting yeah. you ready for the NFL draft. I'm sure we're going to have a bunch of news and rumors and notes over the weekend. So make sure you guys are tuning in on Monday. Go to listen to the show on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast, Locked On Cowboys on YouTube. Go follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you guys next week.